So in our last video we discussed platonic solids and we stated the definition of a platonic solid. We said that it was a convex regular polyhedron and we had some examples of a polyhedra that were convex and one that wasn't, namely these two. So this one was a convex regular, poly regular polyhedron, so it was a platonic solid, whereas this one clearly wasn't. Okay, so now let's look at an example of a platonic solid. So this is a tetrahedron, it's the simplest possible uh, platonic solid. How many edges does it have? Well, we've got a total of uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 edges. And how many vertices does it have? How many corners? We've got 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's 4 vertices. And finally, how many faces does it have? Well, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4. The fourth one you can't actually see, it's in the background, but it has four equilateral triangle faces, so four faces. Now let's look at the next example. Here we've got a cube. Well, how many vertices does the cube have? Well, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4 along the top, and on the bottom we've got 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's a total of eight vertices. Eight vertices. How many edges do we have? We've got one, two, three, four along the top. We've got one, two, three, four along the bottom. And we've got one, two, three, four around the sides going upwards or downwards. And finally, how many square faces do we have? Well, how many sides does a six sided die have? Six sides, you know, as we all know and love. So we've got one, two, three, four one on the bottom and one on the top. So that's a total of six faces. Okay, now let's look at a, a more complicated example. So this is the octahedron. How many vertices does the octahedron have? Well, we've got one on the bottom, and we've got one on the top, and we've got four around the sides, which forms a square. So that means we've got a total of six vertices six vertices. And how many edges do we have? Well we've got one, two, three, four along the top, we've got one, two, three, four around the bottom, and around the midsection we've got one, two, three, four. So that's a total of twelve edges. So twelve edges. And lastly how many faces do we have? Well we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and it's called an octahedron, so we've got eight equilateral triangle faces. So eight faces. You might notice a bit of a pattern developing. I mean, you might notice there's a little bit of a relationship between the cube and the octahedron. You might notice that some of these numbers seem to be repeating themselves, and there's a reason for that, which we'll get to later. But now let's look at a slightly more complicated example. This is a dodecahedron, which I, I personally always have a hard time visualising in my head. Um, so how many vertices does this one have? So this one has a total of 20. It's quite hard to see in this picture, but when you place it in the right position, it's quite easy to understand, because you've got four sort of distinct levels, each of which has five vertices on them. So this is a total of uh, 20 vertices, if you'll take my word for it. And it has a total of 30 edges. And it has 12 regular pentagon faces. So 12 faces. Now here's possibly the most complicated example, the icosahedron. This is the icosahedron. Now how many vertices does the icosahedron have? The icosahedron actually has about 12, so it has 12 vertices. How many edges? Well, it has 30 edges. You might see some similarities here. And how many faces do we have? Well, we've got 20 equilateral triangle faces, so that's 20 faces. And you might notice that I don't have any more examples, and the reason I don't have any more examples is because I've listed all the platonic solids. Yes, there are only five platonic solids, and we'll prove that this is actually true later in another video. But there's another reason why I've been listing these three pieces of information about these platonic solids, and there's a very important reason for that. I said earlier that there was some kind of special relationship between some of these shapes. Well, let's go back and look at this, the, uh, the cube and the octahedron. 
So we notice that uh, the cube has 12 edges, so we've got 12 edges for the cube, and the octahedron also has 12 edges. So there's one thing they have in common. Let's look at the number of vertices. The cube has got 8 vertices, so we've got 8 vertices. And the octahedron has 8, ver eight faces, sorry. Okay. Now the cube has 6 faces. And the octahedron has 6 vertices. So that's interesting. The number of vertices of one shape matches the number of faces of the other. So that's one kind of special relationship they have. Let's see if this is still true for the dodecahedron and the icosahedron. Well, clearly they've got the same number of edges. Each has got 30 edges. And the number of vertices that a dodecahedron has is 20. And the number of faces that the icosahedron has is 20. And lastly, the number of faces on the dodecahedron is 12. And the number of vertices on the icosahedron is 12. So there's our pattern. We notice that the vertices of one shape matches the number of faces of the other. And we call this uh, relationship the duality. We say that the dodecahedron and the icosahedron are actually dual platonic solids. So they're uh, dual platonic solids. I've misspelled platonic solid. So these are dual platonic solids. And also the uh, the cube and the octahedron are also dual platonic solids. And uh, you might notice that I've left the tetrahedron out. Well, that's because the tetrahedron is actually dual to itself. And we call this uh, sort of notion uh, self-duality. So the tetrahedron is actually self-dual. Okay, so now we've talked a little bit about examples of platonic solids and duality. In the next video, we'll discuss uh, more about duality and what it means for two things to be dual. We'll develop a more formal definition for duality. See you then.